Okay, so my topic was anatomical and sociological differences and physiological differences in psychopathy and sociopathy. Now we wait for the slide to change. Well, for my topic, I researched both psychopaths and sociopaths. My idea was that there are anatomical and sociological aspects for these people that are different from the rest of society. Through much research, I found many accounts that this is true. Brains of psychopaths are anatomically different, and because of this, many physiological properties are as well. So the way that I was drawn to picking this as a topic and doing these more research on the topic that after watching your last year on Netflix last spring and into the summer, so in the show, Dexter was shown MRIs of brains, and his father told him how his brain was different. I wondered if there was any sound evidence to this. There was. I found a book called The Anatomy of Violence, The Biological Root of Crime by Adrian Ring, which was suggested to me by a tech at Children. On to my topic. Antisocial Personality Disorder, or ASPD, is an umbrella term for psychopathy and sociopathy. ASPD is defined by the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for the American Psychiatric Association as a pervasive pattern or disregard for and violation of rights of others that begins in childhood or early adolescence and continues into adulthood. <sighs> Psychopathy is biological, which means a person is born with These people have lower anxiety and a lack of emotional expression along with antisocial tendencies. There are four forms of psychopathy of which a person may be too unsuccessful or successful in primary or secondary. Sociopaths however, have all the same characteristics as sociopaths or psychopaths, but are environmentally caused and by definition are all psychopaths. Sociopathy is under secondary so psychopathy, but a sociopath may be unsuccessful or successful depending on whether they commit crime and are caught or not. So what parts of the brain are different compared to control? Well, the amygdala is smaller by about 18%, the right hippocampus is larger, there is a deficit in prefrontal gray matter, the corpus callosum is longer and thinner, triatum gray matter is 10% larger, and other malformations in the brain can contribute as well. These anatomical differences cause physiological changes too. Smaller amygdala can lead to a lack of capacity for emotion. Hippocampal dysfunction decreases fear conditioning, which is what teaches us right from wrong. Prefrontal problems result in higher aggression and antisocial behavior. However, in addition, more prefrontal activity in psychopathic individuals means they use more cognitive thought with emotional stimuli. In addition to how an anatomy affects physiology, the cardiovascular and limbic systems are different in psychopaths. Psychopaths usually have a lower heart rate, but six upgrades per minute for lower heart rate. Sweat production is also decreased for these individuals. Interestingly enough, ASPD is the only psychiatric disorder which has a specific biomarker, which is its low heart rate. Regarding demographics, approximately 1% of the general population consists of psychopaths. But in prison populations, this number increases to 15 to 25 percent of offenders. Additionally, men are three times more likely to be psychopaths than women, specifically white males, are more common. Additionally, because sociopaths are environmentally changed, sociopathy is more common in areas of lower social classes, dysfunctional families, and disadvantaged minority groups, especially people that have been exposed to abuse, neglect, violence, and so forth are prone to develop sociopathy. And with our plethora of technologies nowadays, these brain anatomies and physiologies are able to be studied for the use of SPECT, PET, and MRI. In one specific case of murder, a man by the name of Weinstein had an acute psychopathic event in which he murdered his wife, but he was found to have found that that event was caused by a subarachnoid cyst in a prefrontal lobe, and that was shown by an MRI and PET scan. However, it's expensive to give a brain scan to every single person in the world, so rather than doing this, it's more common for a psychologist to diagnose psychopathy or sociopathy based on symptoms and behaviors. Pre diagnostic tools can be used the DSM 4, the Hair Psychopathy Checklist or PCLR, and the Minnesota Multiphasic Personality Inventory. Some of the behaviors which define ASPD include nonconformity, deceitfulness, impulsiveness, and spontaneity irritability and aggressiveness, disregard for safety of self and others, irresponsibility, lack of remorse, like 
and psychopathic specific behaviors in addition to those are superficial charm, high sense of self-worth, high stimulation need, poor self-control, promiscuity, behavior problems, early in life and delinquency, lack of goals, and versatility. It's most commonly known that so psychopaths and sociopaths are said to have a lack of conscious. Physiologically, the conscious is made up of the amygdala and prefrontal cortex. In normal people, the brain is able to recognize that something is wrong and increase the feeling of the like the wake up the makeup. Psychopaths do not have this communication between their brain and autonomic system. Whereas most people's conscience keep them from committing crime, this lack of bad feelings after doing something bad allows psychopaths and sociopaths to be able to commit crimes easily and deceive them because they're not receiving cues that it's bad. Normal people were conditioned what is bad and good and our body learns how to react from that. I feel this topic is relevant to healthcare in a very passive way. Not all these individuals are serial killers. One day you may meet someone who is psychopathic or sociopathic and it's important to understand who they are and that it's entirely out of their control how they may act. They were born this way or created this way from neglect, abuse, or witnessing traumatic events. In addition, there are television shows about these people. Although with technologists, we would not have the opportunity to treat psychiatric patients, a possible though not proven way to prevent sociopathy, at least, is to be a decent parent and live in a good neighborhood. After finishing up the developmental stage, you can move wherever you like. Although this scenario seems ridiculous, based on the information we have, that's the only possible prevention tactic. Like psychological conditions that are familiar or in the history can contribute to likelihood of developing psychopathy. In this case, to prevent this condition, it would be suggested that parents with this family history look for early signs of mental illness or antisocial behavior in their children. Some challenges on the horizon for these conditions is that because of the small population have this disorder, it does not cause death or negative effects to the individual, so there's not much focus on treatment and cures. There's currently no known cure, prevention of ASPD, and no promising avenues that seem to be ahead. So as mentioned before, psychopaths are not all dangerous and criminals. Suspected that President Lyndon B. Johnson, Winston Churchill, and an astronaut Chuck Yeager were all psychopaths. At the very least, I hope this presentation has shed some light on what these conditions are and how they are different at a genetic and morphological way. And next, I will have a list of all my resources for the pictures. So thank you for watching. Bye.